Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we finally get the water company to put in a water meter for us and we're going to run a new water service down to the to the Outlaw shop. And let's get started. The first thing they do is they hot tap this line. This is a six inch water main and there you can see they placed the meter at my property line. And then it was up to me to get in here with my excavator and you need to you need to try to be five feet deep and so that's what I did even though I had a lot of rocks to go through I brought my excavator in here and started digging from the meter down to the shop and yeah basically I had to dig five feet deep all the way down to the shop now there's a spot by the shop um, that's only about three feet six inches but what I did was I ended up uh, sleeving that water service in schedule 40 um, in a schedule 40 sleeve so that'll give me an extra extra foot or foot and a half of frost protection and yeah basically I just dig this trench all the way down there and then I'm also I'm gonna bed the whole thing in sand and then also I'm gonna sleeve the water service in the five foot trench with some corrugated um, material and here you can see another angle going down this hill and right there I hit a big rock which I actually had to come back and with my smaller bucket and dig through that rock because I had trouble getting through that little area there was two two spots that I had trouble with and I had to actually switch buckets and come back the next day and dig them from the side but yeah Frost, so I'm so my elevation where I'm at, I'm at 8,500 feet, and the freeze zone is like three feet. So you really need to do the best you can to get it as deep as you can, and also to protect it a little bit. So if you have, what I've been told is, if you have your water service, and I'm putting in an, I'm actually running an inch and a quarter water service down this trench, but if your water service is um, encased in some corrugated, um, if you encase it in the corrugated sleeve, that gives you an extra foot. So you could, you could actually have it at four feet deep with that sleeve. Now there you can see that that's the trouble zone. You can see these rocks are really tough. Yeah, so five feet's the mark, but obviously if you, you can sleeve it and and get some extra you know you don't have to be as deep if you if you do the right sleeving and stuff so what i needed to do is run this run this line all the way down to the shop and right here you can see me coming down the hill that area right there was actually pretty easy i was i marked i basically marked the bucket at five feet and that way i could kind of establish that depth. There's more rocks than dirt in this pad. <laughs> Definitely a, not an easy dig. Now here I heat the pipe up and bend it and then I'm gonna run and then I'm gonna run this in, into the bottom of the garage. The garage I've got it sleeved going into the garage and up in the middle of the garage and um, that should be good protection for... Now here I made a mistake right here I actually, I tried to coil this thing out by just pulling it out like this, but it does not work that way. You have to, you have to roll it. So I ended up, I ended up figuring out how much I needed it, and then I cut it, and then I rolled it all back together, and then, and then rolled it out. Yeah, this, this way does not work. You need to roll it. And that took, that was a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah, that did not work. This is when I figured out I just need to cut it, roll it back up, and then roll it. And life's all about learning, so making mistakes, then you do it again. So right here you can see I roll it out. I'm, almost, I'm probably six feet deep right there actually, maybe even a little more, which is really good. Once I get it rolled out, then it was time to put this sleeve on. And this is going to be real added protection for this, and that was kind of a a pain because um, 
these sections of pipe. Now right here you can see I've got some big rocks that I couldn't get I couldn't get the ditch deep enough with the bigger bucket so I switched to this little bucket and started digging out this big rock and it, it was, was kind of some shaly stuff in there you can see it coming out in sheets but I was able to get through there and get it get it nice and deep and that's what it needed once I get the trench dug you can see that big rock I pulled out of there right there um, it was time to sleeve this pipe with this corrugated plastic. Now I started trying to shove it on uh, just on the end of it, but you couldn't really do it like that. So what I did, what I ended up doing is um, cutting it, splitting the corrugated material in half and then snapping it over the pipe. So this way it didn't, didn't really work very good. It was too hard to get it on there because the pipes coiled. That's when I decided just to run it all the way down and then cut it in half. And that seemed to work pretty good. And this corrugated pipe, it'll give, the, it'll give my water service some good protection. And then I'll, after that, I'll bury the trench with, I'll, I'll put about a couple feet of sand on top of this. Right here, you can see me snapping the corrugated material over the, over the water line. The other thing I needed to do was I needed to clear any rocks underneath if there was any like sharp rocks or anything under, I, so what I did was I went down through this trench and cleared off anything underneath this pipe. So it wouldn't, when it, when I did backfill, you know, it, it wouldn't get damaged by, by a rock underneath it. So I basically cleared the whole, everything underneath the water service. I kind of went through and cleared anything that possibly could hurt the pipe cleared it out. It was then time to, to hook it up. And of course I needed to dig out all this mud. When they tested the meter, they filled this hole with mud, with water. And so it was pretty muddy. And then I realized also that the, the way that they angled this meter, they angled it kind of away from my trench. So I, I realized that I was gonna need to take out this corner um, take out a little bit more of this corner to be able to make a nice turn here. Now what I what I usually do, and this is just because I, you know, I've been doing plumbing for many, many years, I always put Teflon tape on and then I put uh, pipe dope on the outside of the Teflon tape and it never leaks. Anyway, right here I figure out that I'm going to need to take this corner out. So I move this pipe out of the way and then I put some plastic down in the trench to kind of protect the bottom outlet of the meter and get the backhoe and dig out this corner, give myself a little more room up here. I then hand dug around the valve, making sure not to, that way I could see it with the backhoe or the excavator and then proceeded to finish, finish clearing out this trench. And we're right about five feet depth. And there you can see the water service in the corrugated material. And right here, we're going to hook it up. Now, it's very important to have all your stuff clean, too. If you do get dirt in there or something, you know, just take it apart and clean it off. And I redid the Teflon tape on the meter and installed this connection. Now, there's actually two valves on the meter. There's one inside of that white pipe down at about five feet. There's a, there's a valve that you can open up and shut off if you need to. And then there's also, if you see that black steel pipe to the right, that's actually a valve too that you can get from the street. Now right here, when I first put this on, there's actually supposed to be a stainless steel uh, insert inside of that blue pipe. And I forgot to put that on and then I had saw it on my wrench. And um, I had it in the ditch with me, but I forgot to put it on. So once I realized that, I had to take that back apart and put that stainless steel sleeve in. And you can see right there, that stainless steel sleeve and get it tightened up. And then I go back and I tighten up the other end, shut her off and then next up was start bedding this whole thing with sand and um, give it some added protection. Plus if anybody digs through here in the future, you know, whenever you hit some clean sand, you know something's there. And I, I put about, I would say I put about a foot and a half of sand over this whole pipe. And then I actually have some leftover 
um, tracer tape from doing the electric service. And I think I'm going to throw that in here too, just to, you know, warn people that there's a pipe under there if anybody starts digging around there. And that's basically it. Uh, um, once I get all this sand, I ended up bringing in two loads, two dump truck loads of sand for this trench. And um, it's definitely needed because when I backfill, there's a lot of, a lot of rocks that I just don't have any dirt without rocks in it. Right here, I used the tool cat a couple times, dumping sand in here. After testing the water, the water line, making sure there was no leaks, we could then backfill the, the water meter. And currently the water's on. I go ahead and give it a little test. Blow out any dirt that's in there. And then keep backfilling. And I had another load of sand that I brought in and I needed to put as much in here as I could. And that's it. So, so basically, if you're installing a water service in the mountains in a cold climate, you want to know how, how deep the frost goes. <clears throat> and it goes about three feet normally, but it could, if you had a real bad winter, it could go deeper. So you kind of, that's why, that's why in this, this other area that's only like three foot six deep, I sleeved it with that schedule 40. And that should give me the added depth that I need as far as frost. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.